In 1998, the French cosmetics retailer Sephora migrated across the Atlantic and opened its first store in the United States. Sephora had cultivated a particular style of cosmetic shopping, 9,000 square feet full of 11,000 products from many brands, free for touching and testing. This heralded a seismic shift in how cosmetics were sold in the United States. Previously, cosmetics were divided in two rigid and non-overlapping categories. Mass market, or just mass brands, like Maybelline, CoverGirl, and Revlon, were sold at drugstores. Prestige brands like Lancome, Estee Lauder, and Clinique were sold at department stores. The division between these two categories was as much about price as it was about image. Prestige cosmetics, also called luxury or premium, were representative of an aspirational, upper-class lifestyle. The gatekeepers of beauty at like a department store is saying this is a great brand, this is a luxury brand. You are selling the whole images of, of luxury. And this is how it was for most of America's history. Where you launch the brand uh, really defined the brand and the price point and everything else. And that was like a very, very, very rigid story. And since most department stores only carried a few prestige brands, women tended to stick with just one. They were Estee Lauder women or Lancome women. If they wanted other options, they'd have to go to another store entirely. Enter Sephora. Sephora brought dozens of prestige brands under one roof for the first time. In what a 1998 New York Times article described as a luxury cosmetics general store. It had proven to be a hit in the retailer's native France, where 10% of cosmetics purchases were made in a Sephora. They really did change the name of the game. They brought in the kind of luxury cosmetics that up until that point had only been sold in department stores and made them available in a street side setting. 20 years later, Sephora is a bona fide beauty juggernaut. It fanned out across the country with over 1,030 stores in the U.S. by 2018. It weathered the 2008 financial crisis and e-commerce boom that devastated many other brick-and-mortar retailers, making it a darling among the brands owned by its parent company, LVMH. But let's rewind a little bit. Yes, Sephora changed how prestige cosmetics are sold in the U.S., but it didn't incorporate mass-market brands. On that front, Sephora has faced a challenge from one of its stiffest competitors, Ulta Beauty. Think of Ulta as basically a suburban Sephora. It started in 1990 in Naperville, Illinois, as a one-stop shop for all things makeup, hair, nails, and salon services. While it offered some prestige products, for makeup, Ulta tended to skew more toward mass-market brands. It staked a claim on middle-class consumers of suburban America, setting up shops primarily in strip malls away from major urban centers. And that's how it was for a while. Sephora, urban and luxury, Ulta, suburban and mass-market. Recently, though, there's been a major uptick in cosmetic sales, and consumers' trends have changed again. People are buying mass brands, they're buying luxury brands, they're buying premium brands, all of which because they're trying to create their own identity rather than being told what their identity is. And if consumers are perfectly happy to have a $7 mascara and an $85 foundation, what does that mean for Sephora, purveyor of the prestige, and Ulta, merchant of the mass market? Today they are really converging with Ulta adding a lot more prestige cosmetics and Sephora opening their doors to more brands that appeal to millennial women. Sephora has brought a few popular new brands to its shelves, like Fenty Beauty, the new brand founded by megastar Rihanna, which broke records for most sales in its first month for a new brand at Sephora. But Ulta has been especially aggressive in introducing more brands to its shelves, adding over 100 new brands from 2010 to 2015 and another 69 in 2016. It has especially focused on prestige cosmetics to bring growth, adding MAC, Estee Lauder, NARS, and in a move that would have been unthinkable 20 years ago, even Chanel. It even opened a store in the middle of Manhattan, defying its reputation as a suburban retailer. This evolution has paid off, as Ulta has posted double-digit sales increases every year since 2015. However, while the global makeup industry is expected to reach a value of $48.3 billion in 2018, that growth has slowed. Women are turning towards less expensive makeup and a more natural look. Whether Sephora and Ulta can adapt to a less voracious appetite from their customers remains to be seen.